So Factorworks has been able to export Datasmith and we've had the twin motion data link for a few versions now. Now there's some really nice improvements in the Datasmith direct link tool and this now has an auto sync option which immediately sends the changes across to Twinmotion from Vectorworks as you're working. So this streamlines the process as you're developing your designs. There's a few other big improvements as well. The Twinmotion Datasmith direct link can actually now export record data and IFC metadata. Now this does come across to Unreal Engine, but not currently in Twinmotion yet, but it will be supported I'm sure in the future. We can also basically specify where we want to store the direct links. So that's a real benefit in that you can choose a custom path on your server or Dropbox, for example. And finally, ambient point lights and spotlights will be exported in the Datasmith so that programs like Unreal Engine currently does support those, but hopefully Twinmotion will shortly in the future too. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the new Twinmotion Direct Datasmith uh, link and you can see that I've got a nice little project here for a contemporary home. Uh, it's one that I designed a little while ago for a client. And all I'm going to do to get this into Twinmotion is go down to my Unreal Datasmith Direct link here. I've actually got the shortcut here up on my basic tools and you can do this by editing the workspace if needed. So the first thing I'm going to do is just click into the settings and you notice that we've got low, medium, high, very high quality. Personally, I always export at medium quality unless I need to go to high if there's lots of curved geometry in my design. And there isn't a huge amount in this one, so medium should be fine. Now you can use the default path or if you prefer, you can actually set a custom path, which is what I've done on this particular project. And you can see I've just put that into my webinar training folder here. So when I basically um, click OK in a second, it's going to export the model. There's just two other things I wanted to mention, and we can now export record data and IFC metadata. However, it does do bear in mind that Twinmotion doesn't yet support these. Um, I'm sure it will in the future, but it's just good to know that these are built into the export. So if we click onto this um, button here, direct link auto sync, just click for a second. It will take a few seconds to start the export process and then we should see a progress bar popping up. So what we're going to do is just pop into our Epic Launcher and let's launch our Twinmotion 2022. Now do remember, if you're a Vectorworks 2022 user, you've got to the end of the month, uh, March 31st, to claim your free Twinmotion license. So absolutely no reason why you shouldn't all grab the Twinmotion license. It's an amazing bit of software and for free, even better. Okay, so here we are in Twinmotion and the very first thing I'm going to need to do is just click import. You'll notice that I'm already on the data link tab. Okay, this is where you would normally import a standalone geometry, but you will notice that I actually have a couple of sources of a few different exports in there. Now the most recent one is this one here, the Swan Lodge. So let's click on this one and go for it. Just before I click OK, I'm going to just check the Keep Hierarchy. And this is one that I advise you keep so that the Vectorworks hierarchy of the model comes through. Otherwise, all objects in a single class or material will get collapsed into uh, one single material. Let's go ahead and click Update. OK, so when we import the model, uh, we get the direct link. And we basically can now see over in the scene graph, the model is imported. So it may not necessarily appear and you just need to click F in order to fit to find your model. And this looks really good. You know, it's coming exactly as I was hoping uh, from my sort of Vectorworks model. See all the textures have come through really, really nicely. And the great thing with Twinmotion, the navigation's really, really kind of smooth and nice. And basically I can kind of just sort of slide the lighting around, change this in real time. Now, if I wanted to make a few kind of design changes, um, we can now go back to our model and do this very, very easily. So what I'm gonna do is just pop back and change these doors. I don't like the style of them perhaps. And let's just pop back into Vectorworks and have a look at this. So let's just go down to select these doors. I think what I'm going to do is go into the settings and let's change this to uh, some Okay, so what we'll do, just pop into the settings. I'm going to go to the side lights to begin with and turn those off. So now I've just got two doors. And if we just go to general, 
we've got swing at the moment. Let's just change that to sliding. And I'm just going to go for a multiple panel sliding door with three panels. So let's kind of see how that change looks, uh, both in the Betworks file. That looks cool. And you'll notice that very rapidly it did the export down here. And if we just click back into Twin Motion, that change has already come through. So this is the biggest sort of difference. So, uh, the one of the real benefits of Twin Motion, as you can see, is the ability to navigate around in real time. Now, one thing that's really interesting is to pop open this statistics panel. And what this will do is give you some feedback on how good your graphics card is handling the Twin Motion software. And basically, as soon as you're in the green, you know that you're okay. It's got a thumbs up here. And you can see that my GPU is basically running this really, really well. Um, and that works extremely well on my MacBook Pro. If you do struggle a bit with the um, graphics card, then what you can do, just so you know, is pop into the preferences, go to quality settings, and if you just drop this down to medium or high settings, the screen will be pretty much as good, maybe not quite as good as ultra settings, but you're gonna get a higher frame rate. So I just thought I'd mention that little tip there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is do a bit more work on our project, both in Vectorworks and in Twin Motion. So I'm gonna basically go through and let's just drag some new glass onto that surface there. And I'm gonna kind of put some context in. So I'm just gonna get my trees. And you'll notice with the Twin Motion trees, there's a very nice library of these available. If you do want to search them, you can search for some oak, for example. And that means that I can pull up some oak trees here. Now I can either drag them in one at a time into my project, or if I want to, I can select multiple items Every single time I click, I'm basically going to get one of those added to the scene. Um, so this is quite good if you're sort of, you know, not being uh, particularly sort of fastidious about which type of tree you're placing, but you just want to perhaps create a little bit of backdrop for your project. You can see how rapidly I've done that. Now, the good thing is all of these trees will stay when I do the updating from Vectorworks, as you'll see in a moment. And a great little tip here is to go to the new container just by right clicking. I would recommend you drag those trees into that container and then right click, rename. Let's just call that trees, of course. And then that means that I can kind of group those up nicely and turn them on and off as required. So I really recommend keeping your twin motion model, twin motion model nice and organized as you work. Okay, so here we are back in our project in Vectorworks and let's just have a little look at the site. So I've already got a site modeled up in my mod site layer here. I just simply turn this back on and really just to um, sort of see a bit of context really about the project now. This is actually on the Grand Union Canal in Loughborough, very near where my offices are. So it's a nice sort of local project. And all I need to do is just check on the direct link and see if it's actually active. Um, so if I basically want to, I can just click to send those changes. But if I click back into Twin Motion, I didn't need to because they're already been put into the model. So basically now, if I do want to, I can basically add some new materials. Let's go to my grass and drag some different types of sort of grass on that surface there. I've also added a uh, nice water shader here. You can see that this water is absolutely amazing in Twin Motion with lots of motion itself. And there's different types of water that I can kind of drag onto the scene. I quite like this one. You can play around with things like the uh, depth and the waves. Um, you can sort of make the water a bit smoother, perhaps a bit less wavy as well. But look at that, it looks absolutely lovely. Okay, good, so let's click T for the texture tool. I'm gonna to sample this material here. I'm just gonna drag that onto there as well. So now what I'm gonna do is basically turn my trees back on and I can sort of see that I was a bit over ambitious with the trees. So what I can do is basically easily select those individually and just move them so they're not on the road there. And let's just sort of have a little tidy up in my project. Now, one of the really lovely things with Twin Motion is the fact you get a really nice library of content. So let's explore some of that for a moment and then we'll go back and maybe make a few more changes. So if I go to, for example, um, back to the libraries, I could go to vehicles, boats, and of course we could drag in a little boat. And you can see it's easy to position. I can actually position it up on the land here. I could even put it up on the wall, but let's position it down and it snaps to the surface I'm putting it on. And we'll rotate it round and we'll just sort of park it over there. 
So very, very nice little library of uh, boats and things. There's also cars. Let's go and add a car into our scene. So over here into the garage area, let's swing around. One of the things you will need to learn with Twin Motion is the navigation. It can be a bit fiddly to begin with, um, but it's definitely something that's worth persisting with. So let's drag in a car. I think we'll have one car parked down the side here, and perhaps we'll just have another car here. Let's change the color of that one. Um, so that we can actually kind of swing that round into our kind of garage area. You can see a bit tight at the moment, so perhaps that should be in the garage itself. Okay, so it's looking really good. Um, as I say, one of the benefits is you can either do your texturing in Twin Motion, or if you do want to, uh, you could do them in Vectorworks first. I actually like to do as much as I can in Vectorworks and then just bring that through into Twin Motion. Sometimes though, it's worth exploring sort of different materials. Uh, you know, you might want to sort of change the type of brick and sort of swap that out as well. Let's kind of keep it as it was as well. One other factor is if you click T for the texture tool, you can actually change the coloration locally. So I can just darken that brick down. And this is something that I will re definitely recommend to you. Um, the textures from Vectors can come through a little bit light as well. Okay, so it's looking really, really good. Um, if I do want to, as I say, I can just keep hopping back into Vectorworks, keep making a few changes. Uh, so for example, let's just add in another object here for my pavement. Now I'm being a bit careful here because I don't want to go to top plan necessarily uh, because that would basically change the link. Okay, so let's do this. So once again, just check on the data link. You do sometimes need to refresh this in order for it to do the updating, but that's only mainly if you've switched across to Twin Motion itself. So those changes are going across. So I think all we need just to finish off this little project for this demonstration is a couple of people, um, and things like the animated people are really, really wonderful. We can just drag these in. We can change what they're doing and sort of poses and so on as well. And let's have someone for her to have a little interaction with. So those are the uh, animated people, which are nice. There's also some groups of people. So again, you can add those into your scene quite rapidly. Let's add some of those guys down there by the canal. And finally, if you do want to use the posed humans, these are particularly good for still images because they're much higher quality. So things like that in Twin Motion are very, very straightforward to do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and basically create a couple of images in Twin Motion now at this stage. So I'm just going to kind of pan back a bit. Um, this is a sort of basic image, but let's click Create. Now, when I've created my first image, I can basically go in and start to fine tune. So I can fine tune things like the location and things like the time of day. That looks nice with those shadows coming across. If you've modeled the building sort of physically accurately, then the shadows will be realistic. But if you have faked the north, you can actually just spin that north angle around, um, maybe just to create a sort of particularly nice visual. And of course you can do sort of shadow studies in this way as well. So it's looking quite nice already. Um, I basically would like to create a few more images. So I just sort of whiz around to a few more points of view. And uh, let's kind of get over this side here. Now, of course, at the moment, you can see a background, which is not the background we're looking for, for this project by any means, certainly not Loughborough. So let's click onto more, go to location, go to background, and we will just swap that out. I normally go for either generic background or sometimes just a sort of generic countryside, just sort of tune that round something a bit more neutral. Um, you get the idea, it looks quite nice. So basically, very quick, if I want to just set up a number of different views of my project, uh, very rapidly, I can do this. If we just need to change the weather, just to kind of make that look a little bit kind of more uh, rainy or a bit more kind of cloudy rather as well. So you will notice that the frame rate drops down a bit sometimes when you change the weather. So that's because I'm in the ultra settings at the moment. Uh, but what do you think? I think that looks really, really nice. Okay, so as you can see, we've done a bit more work on the model and I'm going to just review my images before we render these out. So basically, I'm just going to kind of swing through and one of the beauties of Twin Motion is this ability to very rapidly switch through the views and if you do want to just do a bit of tweaking on the lighting, let's just bring that lighting around. You can see absolutely lovely at night and the lights come on. 
we go around to the front we'll get the sun sort of streaming onto the building as well so really really nice the fact you can set each image with different lighting conditions in fact this one i think i will actually go for a night shot so it's just going to take that down towards the evening a sort of late sunset shot um, and that looks really, really nice. Okay, so once we've reviewed these images, I've just uh, also set up a nice internal view as well, which is super easy to do. All we need to do is basically go to the Export tab and basically select those images that we would like to export. When we click Start Export, if we want to, let's just create a brand new folder for these. Let's call this Renders Final. And basically, you'll be amazed at the speed at which Twinmotion renders. One thing that's quite nice on the Mac is if you just pop open the Activity Monitor application, what you can do is go to both your CPU usage and also bring up the GPU usage as well. So just in here, as Twinmotion is rendering, you can see that the CPU rather is not doing that much, in fact, but the GPU, the graphics card, is doing all the heavy lifting. So if you do buy a computer specifically for Twinmotion, I really recommend getting probably the best GPU you can afford. I mean, I went for the M1 Pro chip and that's been very good. The M1 Max would be a bit faster, but you know, it's uh, enough. So you can see that it's maxed out at the moment and that'll be pretty much done in the next few seconds. Once you've actually completed the renderings, a really interesting thing to do is just pop into your statistics panel and click this one. And basically you can see here, let me just remove those, that the images were taking seven seconds to render. So that's pretty amazing. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick review of those images. Let's go to our folder over here, renders final, and let's just open these up in preview very quickly. And here we go, here's our final images. These are actually 4K. I decided to render them at 4K resolution. And you know, for a very, very quick turnaround within this webinar, hopefully you'll agree that this is sort of a nice little selection of images as a kind of starting point for my project. I mean, we can certainly do better renderings given a bit more time, but yeah, I'm really pleased with these so far. So now I can just pop back into Twinmotion and Vectorworks and just keep working on the two things together to refine them. So I hope you've enjoyed this part of this little presentation. I'm just gonna round off with showing you some final examples of a few other projects as well. Now I just wanted to take this opportunity to highlight my book, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twinmotion. This is a beautiful 320 page fully illustrated PDF and ebook that's available for you to buy in uh, on the store. And it features some of the best featured artists from all over the world. So if you want to learn more about Twinmotion, take a look at the book and I really hope you enjoy reading it. And thanks for watching.